Hey everybody, it's Cameron Tumman. I'm going to show you how to make animated webcam borders and resolve and stuff. Just a reminder, I stream on Twitch, I do editing stuff, not much else. Check it out. So before we start this tutorial, it's going to be really helpful if you have the reactor plugins, which I'll link to in the description, showing right here on the screen. It's going to be very helpful for something that's going to be a little bit into the tutorial, but if you just need a basic webcam border, it's not going to be necessary. So to download these plugins, head on over to stakeunderwater.com and you're going to click on the reactor tab. And then you're going to scroll down to download the reactor installer. Once you're on that page, there will be a reactor installer.lua file that you will need. So plugins aside, let's go ahead and jump into Resolve. So when you open up a new project, you'll be in the cut page. And what you're going to do is you're going to right click on the media pool and you're going to create a new timeline and then go under custom settings and set your timeline frame rate to 60 or 30, depending on what you stream in. And this part's very important because once you set your timeline frame rate, you cannot change it after you start adding stuff into your timeline. So make sure it's set before you do anything in the project. Then jump on over to the edit page and you're going to add a fusion composition under the effects library. Go ahead and open that fusion comp in fusion. So the first thing we're gonna do in here is add a background node. And this is going to be our primary color of the webcam border. So you can label it as border color if you want to. Then we're gonna add a transform in front of the background. And this is what's going to be able to rotate the color. And we'll set a merge onto this as well. And we're going to add a mask here using a rectangle node. And make sure you put the rectangle node into the foreground of the merge node, the green triangle, not the effect mask. Then we can connect the merge to the media out. In the rectangle mask, we need to uncheck solid and check invert. And then on your merge node, set the operator to XOR. This will appear to cut everything out, but that's because the background and foreground are essentially being matted against each other, but we're gonna fix that. Going back into the rectangle, if you increase your border width, then you'll start to see the actual border being made. Then we can go back to the background node and then change the type to gradient. And now we can adjust our color of the actual border. And we can adjust the triangle here to tighten the two ends of the gradient. Obviously, I'm here to teach you about design aesthetics. Now, if we go back to the transform node, we can adjust the angle and now we can make it spin. However, we notice a problem. The white background is present. To fix this, we're going to increase the size to probably around 2.08 and it should be just fine. Now, when rotating the webcam border, you can see you have a nice smooth rotating gradient. Now to animate this, you see you have your timeline bar here. Go ahead and set it to zero and then click on the diamond next to the angle and that's going to set a keyframe. Then bring your timeline bar all the way to the end and then press the right arrow key to go one frame beyond and then type in 360 and that's going to make the webcam border do a full rotation. The reason to do the one frame after at the end is to have it seamlessly loop without there being a duplicate frame at the end. And as you can see, it animates perfectly here. Some other little fun things you can do is add some soft edge to make your edges a little less rigid. You can also adjust this length parameter and this will make the rectangle incomplete. And then you can adjust your position and you can have the position rotate so that you can actually have a rotating line. And you can keyframe it the same way you did the angle. You can also adjust your border styles and refine your edges a little bit so you can make them rounded or have a sharper ridge however you'd like. And there you go, you have a basic webcam border that you can use. Now, if you wanna go into a more advanced stuff, keep watching. If not, leave a like anyways, I'm starving. Now, let's say you wanted to do something a little bit fancier than just a standard rectangle, like if you wanted to have a tab underneath to put your name in or a logo or some sort of rotating metric and you wanna leave room for that, what you can do right here, instead of using the rectangle node, we're actually going to use the polygon also connected to the foreground. And we're gonna go ahead and just draw a basic rectangle here to start. And what you'll notice is that when you try to drag the corners, they don't snap to anything. This can cause a problem if you wanna be precise. And Fusion by default doesn't have any standard rulers or snapping grid. However, there is a way you can actually create your own snapping grid very easily. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a background node. Go ahead and set it to full white. And then on the second tab, disable auto resolution and set your width to 16 and your height nine. We're basically making a 16 by nine aspect ratio background. And go ahead and press one to bring it into the preview viewer. I'm gonna scroll out. And the two things we're gonna need to turn on are show pixel grid and snap to pixel. And make sure the background is not connected to anything. Now you'll see a grid here that we can actually snap to. And as we drag this mask, we can see that it affects both windows. 
And this is how you would create your own snap grid. You can increase the resolution if you want to, to another 16 by nine aspect ratio. Let's say you wanted three times the amount of snapping pixels. You could set it to 48 by 27. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that invert is selected and solid is not. And make sure my border width is set. And now I can adjust the size to something like 0.5. And now we can see we have this nice trapezoid shape, but now we want to fill this in. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this mask and paste, and we're going to drag it into the effect mask part of the merge. So now we see we have this added line. I click and hold on the left side to highlight both of these, and I hold control to highlight the other side as well. Now I'm going to delete them. Now I have a trapezoid shape here. And in order to fill in the rest of it, we just click on solid, and now we have this nice shape. So now we can add stuff like text or a logo or whatever we want to put into this area. However, there's one more issue that we have to face if we want to make any more adjustments to this. You notice that when we affect the border width or anything else, only one of the masks is getting affected. So in order to fix this, we're going to pin this first polygon that we have selected. And then we're going to click on the secondary polygon that we made. And this will bring both of them up into the inspector. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the things we want to be able to adjust in both polygons simultaneously and set an expression. So we're going to do that on size, border width, and soft edge. And all we have to do is just drag the expression over top of the other polygon in the corresponding field. And now we can unpin this. And now if we adjust the soft edge and border width and all that stuff on the first polygon, it adjusts it on both of them. One could call this parental guidance. So this is the point where the plugin is going to come into play. So if you downloaded that plugin, this is how you're going to install it. You're going to go ahead and drag that LUA file into your Fusion timeline. It's gonna bring up a pop-up window here and you can click install and launch. And once it's finished, it's gonna bring up this pop-up window and you're just gonna go ahead and search lightning and enable this lightning fuse effect and then click install. I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna do it again. Suck it. There's also this other lightning effects plugin that does a little bit more advanced features when it comes to lightning but these won't be necessary for the stuff we're doing right now, but feel free to look at it if you want to. And once you install that lightning plugin, you're gonna have to restart Resolve. Now for this specific instance, even though we're doing a regular rectangle, we're still gonna use the polygon, and it's because the rectangle mask doesn't have a size specific adjustment, but the polygon does. The rectangle was self-conscious. So we're gonna go ahead and add another merge node, and we're going to press shift space, and then type in lightning. And that's going to bring up this lightning effect, so we can go ahead and connect that to the foreground of the merge node, but it's still not showing up. So what we need to do is add a background node, bring the alpha all the way to zero, make sure the color is black, and go ahead and plug that into the lightning, and now we have it showing up. And then these are all the parameters that you can adjust, and just play to it to your liking. They're pretty self-explanatory. The crawling one is going to be the one that we're going to animate later on. So we're gonna add a transform node right after this lightning. You could, in theory, add the transform node after each merge, and it would still work, although we want a little bit more flexibility if we need to adjust more things, so that just gives us a little bit more versatility. These start positions from zero to one are your left and right and bottom and top. So we're going to go ahead and position this in the top left and top right and with the start and end position. And then we're going to go ahead and parent the size of the transform to the polygon node so that when we adjust the size of the polygon, it adjusts the size of the lightning as well. And then we can bring the polygon down. Now we notice there's a little bit of a problem here. We get this little cutoff of the lightning because it's at the edge of its border. So how do we fix this? Well, thankfully I did the math for you because I'm nice like that. I'm going to bring the start position to 0.25 and 0.75 and then the end position to 0.75 and 0.75. Now there's another interesting expression that we can add to this. So if I type in star two, which means multiplied by two, that means that the size of the transform will now be always doubled what the size of the polygon is. And that fixes our cutoff issue. And now they adjust correctly. So there is a slight bug with the lightning effect. The blue slider on the lightning color does not work. So if you want to get precise color, there's a little bit of a workaround that I figured out. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a color gain right after the lightning. Then we're going to add a background node, but don't connect the background to anything. And we're going to call this our lightning color so that it doesn't get lost. And then we're going to go ahead and rename this background to pixel grid just so we know which one's which. So let's go ahead and pin the lightning color. 
and the color gain. And we're gonna go ahead and close lift and gamma because gain is the one we're gonna be focused on. So let's go ahead and set an expression on red, green, and blue. And you don't have to do it on alpha, but we will just to make you feel good. So let's go ahead and correspond each of them to the colors on the background node or our lightning color. And now if we click on our lightning color and adjust the color, now it perfectly matches. And you can adjust the alpha if you wanted to make it transparent, but we're not gonna do that because it's not in my script. So as of right now, we still only have one lightning bolt and we wanna have probably four. But one thing that would be a pain is if we had to parent all four of them to one single lightning node over and over again. So there's this convenient feature in Fusion called instancing, where we can essentially clone the node and everything inside of it will be parented except for the things we specify not to be. So what we're gonna do is we're going to copy the lightning and then we're going to control shift V paste three times and that's going to create three instances of this lightning. So now we have three clones of this single lightning bolt. And you can see when we adjust one parameter in this lightning node, it adjusts it for all of them. So there are a few things we don't want to be parented. So what we can do is on our start position, end position, and the randomized slider, we can right click and select D instance. And we can do that for each one. And now we can set our positions accordingly. Now that we have them all positioned, we can still adjust one parameter in the lightning node and it'll adjust the same for all of them so that there's consistency throughout. And then another thing we can do, since we did instance the randomize, we can go to each one of them and set a different randomization to them. Now when we adjust a crawling parameter on the lightning, each of them have a different pattern. So what we can do is set the keyframe at the beginning and end, and one whole number is a full rotation of the crawling. So keyframing is one way. Another way is we can set an expression on the crawling and we can type in time. Now the expression time by itself will increase one whole number every single frame. So because of that, if we just selected time, it would appear not to move. What we can do is we can type in slash 10 and now it'll adjust 0.1 per frame. We can also type in slash 100 and it'll go 100th every frame. And of course, when we adjust our lightning color, it affects all of them, as well as our size. And those are some fun tips that you get to use for webcam borders. So hopefully this inspired you to make some of your own and gave you some useful tips on Fusion in general. If it didn't, I'm not offended. I'm just sad. Love note comments will help though. Hint, hint. I hope to get a lot more content like this out to you all more frequently. And as a reminder, you can follow me on Twitch and ask me questions while I'm live. And I can also go into specific demonstrations there as well. Streaming schedules aren't really possible for me, but when I do stream, I usually stream around 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Get notified, bruh. This is Camera Tim, signing out. Oh, not my heater. Hope I didn't break it.